The Ariadne tag design is very different from other nations with its very large tank-like hull and archaic design. However, Dawn being the home of Ariadne and Tisium being an abundant resource there, the whole thing is made of the stuff, making it both tough and light, giving it a surprising agility that has to be seen to be believed. Well, my Ariadna tag is going to double as an Anaconda reinforcement for Games of Infinity to join my JSA. That means the color scheme we are going for is black power armor with NMM gold trim. But we will add something a little special to this tag to make it just a little bit more unique. I usually brush paint black power armor, but I took this tag as a challenge to try and airbrush some of the work this time. This meant giving the whole model a black base coat. Then taking some dark grays, I sprayed in highlights but made sure not to go too bright as it would no longer read as black. I find there is a very delicate line between your power armor looking like a reflective black surface and just plain gray when you start adding these kinds of highlights. Happy with the airbrush work, I then took Vallejo model color leather brown, not game color leather brown, and marked out the areas I wanted to paint in NMM gold. I then went about starting the NMM gold. My recipe for the gold is to go from leather brown, to scrofulous brown, this time a game color, and then finally up to ivory. By mixing these colors on the wet palette, it's easy to make smooth transitions for painting. I focused on painting these layers in lines across the reflections. These reflections are often placed at random of varying widths. It's important when painting, particularly shiny NMM, that the reflection sizes are not identical, as these do not look natural. Other than this, you can get away with making educated guesses as to where the reflection points will be. As I continued to paint the NMM, I found that I had fallen a little into the trap of having two formulaic reflections that looked a little too clean. I then decided to try approaching the technique with a rougher approach, painting more areas rather than lines. I liked how this looked and it helped break up the patterns I was falling into with many of the other reflections. I didn't have the heart to redo what I had already done, however. After the time it takes for whole nations to rise and fall, I had finished painting all the non-metallic metals. Yay. Time to come back to the power armor. Because the armor had only been airbrushed, the highlights were very general and lacked definition. Time for the edge highlighting. There are a lot of edges on this bad boy, but luckily they were mostly easy to paint. Loading the brush with a very pale gray, and wicking it so that the bristles didn't hold too much, I used the edge of the brush to catch the raised edges and define them. I think you'll agree that it made the model pop and gave the obsidian armor look I was aiming for. Now comes the fun and unique part. There were a lot of areas of the model that had indentations and I wanted them to glow with a light of their own. I chose to paint these a bright magenta and have a bit of OSL around them. To achieve this, I needed the sources of light to be as bright as possible. So these were painted white. Then, using a magenta ink thinned down so that it was very translucent, I carefully sprayed, aiming at the sources of light. The overspray would act like an OSL effect, and you can probably tell my aim with the airbrush is not perfect. But we were not done yet. We needed the source of light to be more intense to sell the effect. I began by running over each source of light with pure magenta ink, followed by Vallejo off-white mixed with a little of the magenta ink to make a bright pink. 
This was then placed into the center of each light source. Finally, where the source of the light was strongest, pure off-white was placed, creating the transitional glow of each light. To finish off the tag, we only had a little more to do. There were a number of work lights around the model, so I approached them the same as UA Minerals tag with a yellow base and brown shade. There was still a lack of color missing from the tag, so I added a little green to some piping before finishing the model. Took a while but this model was a lot of fun to paint and I'm really happy with how the magenta lights added color and atmosphere to the final scheme. Thank you for watching and I ask that you like and subscribe if you haven't already. I look forward to reading your comments and if you are interested in getting the painting module from Crydrophy that I was using in this video, I have an affiliate link in the description that will give you 5% off any orders. So until next time, take care.